Hey YouTube, welcome to the second episode of um, the mini-series in which I discuss how to make abstract wallpapers using Photoshop. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make a, um, how you can make a wallpaper, which personally is one of my favorites, and looks something like this. Now, I'm sure you've all seen this, sort of like a, uh, wisp of smoke, and it's either you can have any type of color you want on it. Um, again, I just want to remind you that uh, in this series, I do not use any uh, downloaded images except for the one in which I will be actually manipulating one image to make it look abstract. And I also don't use any downloaded um, abstract brushes of that sort. So again, this is all from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it... Um, uh, wisp of smoke, uh, smoke, uh, set your dimensions to whatever you want. Again, I like to set my resolution pretty high. This time, I'll be working with 8-bit, um, uh, color depth because uh, it, the filters we'll be using, uh, don't, uh, work on 16 or 32-bit, so we'll have to settle for 8-bit. And again, transparent uh, background for multi uh, for multi-layered, you know, imaging. So let that uh, render. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create two new layers so that we have three in total. And in the first layer, as usual, I'll select black and uh, fill it in for whoops. Transparent, I mean, okay. Um, for blending purposes and aesthetic purposes. So now I'll go to my brush tool. Um, I'll select a uh, decent size. Um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's good. And then hardness set to zero. And I'll select white and do opacity uh... let's make it fifty Okay, and then I'll make uh... I'll just start making like a wisp of smoke sort of so start with that actually move that up a bit actually so like that and then that and I will make a smaller brush and maybe make it coming here have this going here maybe another one just going like that uh... don't worry about it now this is all going to be distorted and uh, warped out of its mind so yeah and then i'll just take a uh... master diameter make it maybe uh... F yeah that's good and then i'll set the opacity to uh... i don't know fifteen something very light just to give it like a backdrop Actually, let me go back on that, make it a little bit smaller, and just now add the backdrop. Okay, that's better. <coughs> so uh, now, again in the second layer, I'm going to do my first filter, which if you go to other and then maximum, as you can see, sort of creases the image to make the centers nice and sharp and everything else blended. So go ahead and play around with this. Um, uh, the, uh, the second filter, I will go to Filter Distort, and right now you can pretty much play around with any of these. I usually just go to, uh, either, uh, Ripple, or, um, or Twirl, Wave, and Zigzag. Uh, but anything, you can really play with anything just to, um, bend the shape around, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Like, I'll go to Twirl. Okay. And I'll actually repeat that. Okay. And, um, then go to Filter, uh, Distort, and maybe I'll do Zigzag. So, I will do, out from, uh Actually, I might do around center, yeah. And then I'll do that. Mm, yeah, that's, that's not bad. 
So, okay. Now, I, uh, again, still in the uh, second layer, I'll go to Edit, Transform, and Warp, or you can just click Control T, or if you're on a Mac, Apple T. So then, now you're in Transform, so just right click, and go to Warp, and now you sort of have like a mesh of this image. So, imagine uh, this image as a sheet of paper that you can bend in uh, 3D reality. So you can, for example, bring in the edges and bring them back. Okay. And then you can bend this sheet over and bring this side up. Wait. Okay, and bring this side up. Um, and then you can pinch this out a little bit, move the whole thing up. And you can sort of see a small preview here, you can just click enter, or return, and now you have something that looks like this. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and uh, blur this, wait, and make this wider, well, yeah, or, you know, you could blend it however you want. Um, if you're not happy with the effect, you could always go to uh, transform again, and warp, and then move this image around. Uh, I'll go to make that a little wider here, and then I'll do free transform, move the whole thing down a bit. Okay, so I'm satisfied with that. And now the, as usual, fun part, which is coloring. And, um, you can just either, you know, color it, again, just select random colors and color it wherever you... Um, oh, right, brush, and color it wherever you want, and then do the overlay I'm about to show you, or in this case, I'll make a gradient, but let me just blur this here a bit, okay, so now to my other three, I'll do a gradient, so I'll go to my gradient tool, um, I'll go here and select, uh, you can either go to, um, the spectrum or the transparent rainbow, it doesn't really matter which, you can, you can edit this around, though I prefer keeping it like this, so I'll just click OK, and I'll, anywhere is fine really, I'll click shift, this, uh, sort of snaps it to the axis, and then I'll move it all the way here, and now I have this full spectrum with a little transparency at the end. Um, so I'll just double click on the third layer here. And in this case you can go uh, to several things. You can go to a blend mode, either color, now you have that. Or you, in this case what I like to do is you can go to soft light and it makes it sort of uh, transparent and more gentle. Uh, you can really pr play around with all of these. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do, but I'll just leave it, like, yeah, so I'll just leave it at soft light, and, um, yeah, that is pretty much it, so, um, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, stay tuned, and be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe.